Hey, today's video is on Stagehand. Stagehand is an AI browser automation framework. It's fully open source. You can run it yourself locally, and I'm gonna show you how I use it later in the video on a real project. Stagehand is built on top of Playwright, and it's by the browser-based team. Now, what BrowserBase allows you to do is run these Playwright instances in the cloud, and they have a ton of cool features. It can run in stealth mode, it's scalable. You don't need to worry about a lot of the infrastructure when it comes to running these browsers when you use BrowserBase. Now, the video isn't about BrowserBase, it's about Stagehand, but I figured I'd share a little bit about BrowserBase as they are the team behind the project, and they've also been kind enough to sponsor this video that I wanted to do on Stagehand. Stagehand combines the best of both agents and Playwright, and allows them to work seamlessly together. Stagehand goes beyond what you can do with computer use from Anthropic or OpenAI, it even integrates nicely with those, as I'll show you later in the video. The major benefit is that we both have an agent, but we also have a Playwright instance, and we can use both of them together. We can even cache agent actions, and then we have deterministic playbacks when we need to run through these tasks in the future. Also, due to its core integration with Playwright, it does data extraction a lot better than, let's say, computer use, which will just be taking screenshots of the screen and then and extracting data that way. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Every week I do a different video on open source or AI coding tricks. I'm the founder of Inbox Zero. I'm building the world's best AI email assistant for email. If you're flooded with email, go check it out and give it a star on GitHub. So let's get into the video. Now, what Stagehand will do is allow you to interact with the web. So it'll do similar things to Playwright. This is just wrapping Playwright, actually. Page.gotobrowserstore.com slash cookies. So there is deterministic, exactly what you said will happen. But now, page.extract, we want to get some information from the page, the price of the first cookie. So that's already an AI doing that for us. And then we can do page.axe, so add the first cookie to cart. And then we can do also agent.execute, complete checkout. Now, the difference between page.act and agent.execute, both of them are AI, but this is basically one task, add the first cookie to cart. So it's assuming it can actually be done, click it. And then checkout is actually going to be like five different steps afterwards. And that's all handled by this agent autonomously. I'll explain a bit more in a bit, but in the video, I'm actually going to show you examples of it in use. I'm going to set one running right here. So here, this is a meme generator. Yeah, nothing better than Inbox Zero. And here you will see a web browser will start up and start showing us what's happening. So this is the AI actually running through our request and creating a meme for it. So you can see it's gone to imageflip.com. Soon it will go and pick like a good meme that it thinks is relevant for us. Go to that page and start generating the meme. So it's going to go to a page like this. If you're not familiar with image flip here, you can create memes, type what you want and it will create it. So the AI is basically going through this process, coming up with an idea, seeing the different memes it has available to it. And then, you know, clicking generate on the meme and actually creating it for us. Here you can see it's going, it's decided success kid meme generator. So that's a good idea in terms of getting to inbox zero, happy baby getting there. So let's see if it's able to go and finish its task, but I'm going to let it run in the background and something else we can do is open operator. So here you can ask it any question and it's going to go and search the web and find an answer. So what is Steph Curry's PPG? And you can see it's gone to a website, gone to another website, and finally gotten the result. The goal has been achieved. Steph Curry's PPG is 24.5 as shown on his official NBA stats page. Now, obviously this is a somewhat simple question. You could probably achieve the same goal in a bunch of other ways, but yeah, having an AI run its own browser is one way of doing that and is a good way of solving the problem. And one last example I'll show you in the video is basically here, I want the AI to go and unsubscribe for me automatically for emails. When I hit the unsubscribe button, typically I'll get taken to another website, I've got to click unsubscribe from all or approve some settings. I don't want to go through those steps. I just want the AI to go and do it in the background. That'd be super helpful for Inbox Zero users so they can just let an AI unsubscribe on its behalf. And so this can be done using browser-based and stagehand as well. Another use case might be, let's say someone emails me for the first time and I want some context and I want my AI agent to be able to respond as well as possible. So if it goes and does like a quick search about the person online, so that that would be in like another really nice use case. And it's funny when I signed up to browse the base, they actually had an automation like that running for me as well. And they basically send you an email, like talking a bit about yourself and asking a question. And that is backed by stagehand as well, which is really nice. Now, unfortunately, Braintrot has actually gotten a bit stuck. I don't think, oh, open my email. This is the furthest I've seen it get. You can see it's gone and typed it in. So yeah, it, it's doing well here. I might need to leave this tab open because I've never seen it do as much. Oh, very nice. Zero unread messages. Okay, cool. So we're actually getting to the end here. It's created the meme for me. I wonder, is it going to be able to, uh, hopefully it will go and give it back to me soon. Save this image and then paste it here. 
Now, jumping back to an overview of Stagehand before we get into the code, I've given you some ideas of what you can do with it. Research agent, task agent, even like authenticated agent, you can log into something, file your taxes. And what's the difference between this and legacy frameworks and browser agents? So on the left, we have legacy frameworks such as Playwright and Stagehand is built on Playwright, but obviously Playwright by itself, it has no AI capabilities. So you can't write natural language. Hey, click this button. You've got, got to actually give it the text, get started or the idea of the button or something to find the button. So an AI can go and do that for you. Now a browser agent, so you can use something like OpenAIs. So it can do a whole bunch of stuff as well, but you still got to do a whole bunch of extra work as well if you're using that. For example, if you're using OpenAI's computer use and Anthropic is very similar, what the AI does is it gives you back results like this. It's going to think a bit, clicking on the browser address bar. And what it's going to give you is like an X, Y coordinate and go do left click. And you've got to then manage this yourself. Now, the next step to manage it is something like this. You're going to click, do page.mouse.click. Hopefully it works and keep going. Browser-based stagehand actually handles all of this for us. So you can still use computer use with Stagehand. This is all built into Stagehand, but it will handle this sort of thing for you. And it will also go a bit step further. It won't actually just be about X, Y coordinates. It will also do things like this. So he can see the X bar. Let's say we do a uh, page to observe. So it's going to find all the buttons on the page we can click. And so it's going to give us like an array of these actions where we can click. And also here is like the actual selector for the button itself. And this is really helpful because we can cache this. So this is one of the things they support as well. So click the quick start link and we can cache it for the future. And so this is what an act with cache function would look like where first we observe the page trying to figure out what we can do. If we've already got it like cache, we don't actually need to go and do this observe. All we need to do is the actual act action. And I'll show you this in a real code base afterwards as well. Now to get started with Stagehand, the easiest way to do it is use the MPX script. So MPX create browser app. We can call this whatever we want. Would you like to start with a quick start example? Sure, why not? Be easier for us. Then we can choose the model. The Stagehand team said Gemini 2.0 Flash is actually a very good option here. You could probably even use 2.5 Flash now. And yeah, it's obviously great price, but it's also, it works very well with Stagehand from what I've been told. And are you using Cursor or WinServe? So I'm using Cursor. You can run it locally or using browser-based. I guess we'll show local first and then afterwards we can change it to use browser-based. And then over here, we can CD into the project, npm install and npm start, and then we have it running. So here you can see the project, it's been set up. I have some Cursor rules, which is really nice as well. It teaches Cursor how to use Stagehand, which is nice. And let's just look at the package JSON in terms of what was added for us. So you can see browser base SDK was added, Stagehand itself. So this is core dependency. We have Playwright, Stagehand is built on top of Playwright. Then we have AI SDK. So this basically allows us to switch in and out between different SDKs. This is by the Vercel team. You do not need to use this, but yeah, I recommend it. I think it's a really good library. And you can see we've got a few other things. I actually went and added Google and Anthropic. They weren't in here by default. But yeah, you can use any LLM you want. Here you can see on install, we actually install Playwright locally. So we can use it on our own machine. But we could also be using the remote version using browser base. And here you can see some example code that is generated for us. So let's take a look at this main function. It's around 60 lines of code. And here we can go and run it. So overall, not such a long file. Most of it is comments. What we're going to do is we are going to go to docs.stagehand.dev. We're going to click the search box. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do an observe. So type, tell me in one sentence why I should use stagehand into the search box. So what this does is actually gives you an action that you can go and act on afterwards. So we're not actually acting on it. Over here, we're going to act on it. As I mentioned before, act with cache, really cool. And so what it does is it reads the cache. If we have this instruction already cached, so then we're just going to act on it. But if we don't have this instruction cached, then what we're going to do is we're going to observe it and then store it in the cache and then act on it afterwards. And so this observation result, I guess here we've we've got a few results coming back, but yeah, we're taking the first one action to cache. So the yeah, what this does is it will give us an X path basically and we'll know how to act. It will be like click on this element and it will be stored for us, which is cool in many use cases. And so here you can see we've done observe and act over here that's step one and then over here we've also done an observe and act over here step two and then what we've done at the end is extract the text of the ai suggestion from the search results 
and we'll put it into the text. You can see it's being validated result. So here we get the result back. And then here we are hoping that we get the result, got the AI suggestion. And we also log some metrics. So stagehand.metrics will tell us how many tokens were used on like observe, on act, on different things and so on. Last bit I'll show you, we don't need to change this, but if we're using browser base, it's just gonna console log that we can view the live session over here. It's getting the browser base session ID, but if we don't have a session ID, so we're going to continue on, we're going to set up the page. So this is the, the playwright page being run locally, and then we're going to run main. And by the end of it, we're just going to close it and clean up. So what I'm going to do now is do npm star and see what this script actually goes and does for us. So here you can see it's loaded up the docs. That's a good first step. We're using playwright because it's local. You can see it's actually gone and done the search which is cool, it's clicked it. And over here, by the way, we'll see all the different things it's doing. Let's start from the beginning maybe, click the search box. So it's acting on that function with Gemini 2 flash call. Here are the instructions that's gone and done. I'm not gonna read through all of that. You can see we're going through. And then we do button search. So we see that with the observation that we found this element and this is where the AI can find it on the page. And this is something we cache for the future. So if we don't want this to happen every single time, like we know we're gonna run this a hundred times, then we can just have this cache. And so it is deterministic. If we know it's run once, then we can continue to use it as like regular playwright that's deterministic. And so this is one of the big advantages of using Stagehand that you can do things like this and it can work in a repeatable manner. And you don't need a developer to go and like type everything out for this to work either. And I'll actually show you the difference of what this would look like if it was a developer or if you're using Stagehand or it's a similar tool. So here you can see we've set up Stagehand. This is Playwright basically, but then we've done Extract. So instead of having to go through like a million different tasks, get company name, parts, split it up, know exactly on the page where things are. And yeah, basically the AI can run it all for us. It's just a way simpler saying this is the instruction. This is a schema I expect back and just getting the results and in JSON format. And you can see, yeah, this is the end of sort of the Playwright example. So it's gone and finished its task while I was talking about that. Tell me in one sentence why I should use stagehand. So this was an observation, performing act, search. I'm just going to jump to the end. Oh, it looked like it might have errored actually, which is a little bit annoying. I think it timed out after 30 seconds. Thank you so much for using stagehand. Okay, great. And you can see the different steps it's taken. Over here by the end, it tells you all the different metrics, which is helpful to know how many act tokens you used how many extract and so on, and then the total tokens. And then the result was, tell me in one sentence why I should use stagehand. So I think this is basically the text we put in. I'm not actually sure it was like too helpful in this example, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how this works. And then I'll give you another example over here where I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I want the AI to go and unsubscribe from URLs on my behalf from emails. So here you can see I pass in the unsubscribe URL as an environment variable. We go to this, so this is just regular playwright deterministic. We log some data. And now over here, you can go a few different ways. I mentioned that this works with computer use. So here you can see we'll put in Anthropic for this. You basically have two options for if you go down this method. You don't need to use stagehand agent, but you can. And if you do, then you basically have two options for computer use. And this agent, it will go and take multiple steps on its own. It's not like before where we were telling it like step by step, look for this button, then do this, then do that. This will take multiple steps, but it will still all work cleanly with stagehand and do all these things. So this could be like five different steps. I could also do this without stagehand agent and just do observe and act as we had before. Then you can see we're doing execute. So complete the email subscription process on this page and we extract the data, like the message and the status of whether we were actually able to do that or not. And so what this would look like within browser base, I don't need to have it running on my computer anymore. I don't need Playwright installed at all. I just pass the data over to browser base and it will go and run this for me and manage the browser. And yeah, th this is just really helpful. If you've dealt with this before, it becomes like a real mess basically. And so this just manages everything for you. So you don't need to worry about setting up a new server, having Playwright installed in terms of stealth stuff or proxies. It just it handles so much of it for you. So you don't get blocked. Or let's say you have a thousand requests at once. Now you have to scale up your Playwright instances, but browser base just handles that for us. So I'm going to show you a little bit around the stagehand docs just because it can be helpful. So this quick start, I mean, we've gone and done that ourselves anyway, interact with a website. So yeah, you can see here exactly what we've done and we can get back extracted page data and so on. And we can also use a browsing agent to do it. Here are the more 
jobs about caching in action. I've already spoken about that, so I won't say too much. You can use it in Next.js, so that's going to be helpful for a lot of people. There's an MCP server, which I haven't actually used myself, but could be worth installing. And this basically gives Claude Desktop or whatever it is, Cursor, it gives it the ability to go and use browser base to go and do things on its own on your own computer, which is really cool. Here's a section on the computer use agent. Ah, I actually forgot to talk about the configuration, but there is a configuration file. So it will look something like this. If you're using browser base, then you'll go and set all the settings, your project ID and so on. And that's how you set up stagehand. And then if you're using computer use, this we did see is where you set up the agent and you just pass in like the information you need. You do not need to use this. The first example we showed, it didn't use this agent, but if you want, you can use it. And what they mention here is that it can be very helpful for things like iframes, which are quite difficult. So with regular playwright, but, but computer use is very good at this sort of thing. And here you can see if we've got a local setup, so it looks more like this if we're using stagehand, even simpler. Telemetry and the evaluations here, you can see the tokens that we used. We saw that already, but what I found interesting here was the evals and they use something called brain trust. I use it as well, but if you're not familiar with it, maybe I'll do another video in the future because it's a really cool tool, but it helps you see how good your AI is at completing tasks. So here you can see it's got a 33% error rate. And so you can compare with a tool like brain trust between like different LLMs, what the costs are, like what the error rate is, what happens if you change your prompt, how does that impact the performance? Did you go from 90% to 80% or to 100% and so on. And so you can see the tests actually they have in their repo. So I'm going to go to evals tasks, tasks over here to go and have a look. And if you click here, Amazon add to cart, we'll see like another really simple example of a test. We're using Playwright to go to browser-based github.io. So it's this Amazon test site they've basically created. We'll go to this. I'll show you what this URL looks like. So it's a 14 inch laptop case. This is just a clone of Amazon, by the way. And if I hit add to cart, let's see what happens. It takes us to cart.html and I'm going to do proceed to checkout and see what happens. And we get to the sign-in page. So we want to check that happens in the test as well. So this was just regular Playwright or stagehands wrapped version of Playwright. But then what happens is we wait five seconds and then we act. So click the add to cart button. Then we wait another few seconds. So that's what we did. And then we do something else. We wait and we click proceed to checkout button. And by the end of it, what do we want? We expect that the URL is going to be sign in.html. And so here were two AI steps and we can check they actually worked. Now imagine we could run the same test across 20 different LLMs and understand how each LLM performed. Did they all get this right? Some of them will fail. We got it right when we did it manually, but would an LLM get it? So that's what all these evals are for. Here you can see uh, extract AI grant companies and again, go to a website that they set up, this demo website, and you can see if they've managed to extract the grants or not. Now, in terms of the actions we can take, we can do observe. So this is going to observe the page and give us back some actions that can be taken or find the buttons on this page. And as we saw before, you can click and here are the different X paths and so on. We can also extract information from the page. So we just pass it as odd schema with instructions and we get the price of the item. And then we can also act on behalf of our users, which is like actually clicking a button that was observed before. And so you can pass an observe result to act to perform the suggested action, which will yield a fast and cheap result, no LLM inference. So if we've already done the observation before, then the, all we need to do is pass it to act and actually have it do what was planned. And in terms of playwright operability, Stagehand is built on top of Playwright, so you can use Playwright methods directly through the Stagehand instance. So things that we've seen, go to and act, in terms of act, is actually being overridden because click on the contributors. This isn't part of Playwright, and we need an AI to go and do that task for us. Hoping this video was useful. Let me know what you think and if you try it out. Give Stagehand a start on GitHub, but would also love it if you give Inbox Zero a start on GitHub. I'm building the world's best AI email assistant. And if you want to sign up, the website is getinboxzero.com. So let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe and until next time.